Greater Emmanuel Temple, Pastor Hurst, y'all, Lady Hurst, y'all, come on, let's go. Let's go. Come and be blessed at the Greater Emmanuel Temple. Come and be blessed. You can get what you need from God. Come, on. Come and be blessed at the Greater Emmanuel Temple where God is mm. with us. He's here with us. Where us. God is Ooh. with us. Say yes. Say and be blessed at the Greater Emmanuel Temple. worship the Lord. Hallelujah. He's so worthy. He's closer than the breath that you breathe. Hallelujah. I live to worship him. Thank you, Lord. To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live. I live to worship you. Hallelujah, oh, to worship you, I live, to worship you, I live, I live, to worship you, oh, Oh, 
the depths of your soul single. Jesus is worthy. Oh. Hey, somebody praise him.
today. He's so worthy. Hallelujah. Jesus is worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the glory. Worthy of the honor. Come on, somebody and praise him. Hallelujah. Jesus is so worthy. Hasn't he been good to you? Hallelujah. Come on, right where you are, praise him. Send up a praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He's so worthy. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on, raise your praise to him. worthy. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody praise him. Come on, right where you are, give him a praise. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Well, God bless you, everyone. My name is Bishop Jermaine D. Hurst, Senior Pastor of Greater Manual Temple Church, the Church of Champions, in the beautiful city of Buffalo, New York. Listen, I'm so very excited that you have joined us for our live broadcast. We want to thank God for all of our partners and our members that sow into this ministry. If you'd like to sow into this ministry, you can do so at any time. Our information is on the screen. Please feel free to sow. And we thank God for all of you that have supported us over the years. And we thank God that even during this time of pandemic, that we're able to touch lives all over the world. And so we want to thank God for you, you, and you. So today's message is entitled, I'm coming to your house. That's right. Jesus is coming to your house. I pray that the worship and the word of God will be a great blessing to you and that your life will be transformed by his presence and by his glory. So remember, he's coming to your house. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for everyone who is tuned in right now whether that be on our conference call or those that are watching us in social media and on the internet in general. I pray, God, that your glory will be revealed, that your presence will be in every home, and that lives will be impacted through the worship and the word. We thank you that salvation has come to our house and deliverance has come to our house, and great things are taking place even now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Well, my name is Bishop Jermaine D. Hurst, and we want to thank you for joining us. And I have a word for you at the following of the message. So please stick around and enjoy the word. God bless you. Well, God bless you, everyone. We certainly thank God. Let's give God praise. Those of you that are watching on our live streaming and those who are on our conference call, uh, we thank God for you. My name is Bishop Jermaine D. Hurst, a senior pastor of Greater Manual Temple Church, the Church of Champions in the beautiful city of Buffalo, New York. And I just want to thank God for you in your presence here with us right now, right now, this very moment. Can you like and share? I need you to hit the share button. Share this word with your brothers and sisters and friends and that it may go viral, that the word of God may perpetuate the ears and the hearts of men and women all over. And certainly we thank God. I'm going to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies towards us. We thank you for this opportunity that you've blessed us to share your words of eternal life with your precious people. Now, God, I ask that you let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart allow it to be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, you are our strength and you are our redeemer. Now, Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. We come against every demonic attack and every hindrance through this medium, through the atmosphere, through those that are watching on their phones, on their PCs, or wherever they may be. Allow the word to have free course, and we'll be mindful to give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. Anoint me afresh 
that I may decree your word to the hearers and that your word will be hidden in our hearts that we might not sin against you. In Jesus name we pray. Can we say amen, amen, and amen. I need a few of you to type amen and i like to see some emojis go up as we lift up the name of Jesus and we're so very thankful for what the Lord is doing. And so I, I want you, if you have your Bibles, whatever you have with the word of God on it, uh, if you can turn with me to the book of St. Luke, uh, chapter number 19, and verses 1 through 7. Uh, the book of St. Luke, uh, chapter number 19, and verse number 1 through 7, it says, And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans. And he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus. Make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guests with a man that is a sinner. I'm going to speak to you from the subject, I'm coming to your house. Can you write that on the screen? And those of you that may be taking notes or listening on the conference call, I'm coming to your house. COVID-19 has positioned you and I, as well as the church, to refocus our perspective concerning our identity in the earth. The pandemic has literally caused us to redirect ministry back into the homes of believers. For years, we have engaged in semantics and theological arguments and dispositions on who and what is the church. The challenges of COVID has caused us to redefine what you and I call church. Jesus states in the book of St. Matthew chapter number 16 and verse number 18 as he had positioned and put questions out to his disciples about who do men say that I am and who do you say that I am? And it was there that Peter said, thou art Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus understood and he let Peter know that flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my father, which is in heaven. And Jesus very famously says in that 18th verse of chapter 16, he says, upon this rock, I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I had the wonderful privilege some years ago, my wife and I, to go to the Holy Land in Israel, and we went uh, to the very place, Caesarea Philippi, where Jesus made this statement. And normally, when we do proper exegesis of this text, we focus so much on the gates of hell, and we focus on the area of demonic activity. But I submit to you that if you go to Caesarea Philippi, you'll find that right there in that area is a place called the gates of hell. It was literally the mindset and the sense of worship of Hades, where they would make human sacrifices. And there was a deep pit down there when I went to go see those ruins. And there was a strong religious sect of strength concerning Hades and the worship of idol gods. 
And so it was there that Jesus understood that the church that he would build, which would be built upon his name, upon this rock, I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The word church, this is the first time we are introduced to the word church in the New Testament where Jesus uses it. The word church comes from the Greek word ecclesia. And ecclesia, ecclesia means called out. These are the called out ones. I want to submit to you, those of you that love the word and love to study, that the word church was not a religious term. The word church was a political term. It was literally those who were politically called out to come together to represent the benefits and represent the rights and the decision making on the behalf of a government or a kingdom. And it is there that Jesus is saying to us and to his disciples that upon this rock I build my church. I'm so glad to recognize that it is the church of God. And a lot of us have displaced our value in the brick and mortar. But we have to understand that God has called you and I and we are the church. And then he says, upon this rock, I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Uh, when he understands about shall not prevail against it, the gates of hell, it is indicative of a forward thrust. In other words, brothers and sisters, the church is moving forward. It is not the gates of hell that is coming against the church, but it is the church that is going against the gates of hell. You and I, even in 2021, should have a mindset to thrust forward. I need somebody to write that down. Go forward. Go forward. It is not time to go backward. In other words, you and I cannot backslide in this season. We have to move forward and fulfill the purpose of God for our lives. I want you to understand that the church is more than a building. The church is more than an organization. I want to submit to you that there are literally five things that I want uh, to share with you and remind you of what the church is not and what the church is. Number one, the church is not what we've been called to, but the church is a gathering of individuals who've been called out. A lot of times we want to identify uh, that we are called to the church. And right now, COVID has revealed to us uh, that if you're focusing on being called to it, a lot of us are no longer being called to it because of the pandemic. So does that mean that the church no longer exists? Brothers and sisters, the church is alive. Number two, the church is not a building, but the church is a body. We are the body of Christ. So once the building is closed, it does not mean that the church is closed. I wish I can have a few folks that will write amen down there, write it right down on the line so we can understand if you're in agreement with the preacher that even though your church building may be closed, that the church of God is still open. And so we cannot limit our faith to the brick and the mortar. Number three, the church is not an organization uh, but the church is an organism. And so we must understand me being a part of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World. Some of you may be Baptist and Methodist, whatever denomination, Church of God in Christ, whatever denomination you may feel that you are connected with, whatever your Reformation is. Uh, you may be like us. Some of your convocations, councils, and conventions were shut down in 2020. Some of us had to go to virtual means uh, to celebrate our special services because that was what our organizations would do. And some of us were not able to gather at all. Uh, but I want you to understand that the church is not your organization. And so COVID has proven to us that even though we may not be able to gather like we used to, even in this season, that we still are the church of the living God. And fourthly, the church is not a place, but the church is a person. 
And so we cannot uh, get to a court where you're caught up in a place that I would serve God better if I could just get to the place. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I want to mention to you that God doesn't just want to be in a physical place called a building, but he wants to live on the inside of you and I. The Bible says, for greater is he that's within us than he that is in the world. And fifthly, brothers and sisters, the church is not something we go into and sit, but it is what is inside of us that we should share it with the world. In other words, this thing has forced many of us to come outside of the box to be able to understand that you and I have a ministry that is beyond the padded pews and the stained glass windows that you may frequent from time to time. I want you to understand that it's always been the plan of God for us to touch the world. He tells us, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. It is God's will for you and I to understand that regardless of semantics, I know a lot of us have an understanding of what the church is, but we have to be careful that the semantics of what we call church doesn't legally bind us to certain traditions that we have no effect in this day. And so, brothers and sisters, it's important that we understand that COVID-19 has literally reminded us that our relationship with God is still personal. What does that mean? We're not always able to come together like we normally would. You may not be able to do the traditional services like you would normally do. But rest assured, this relationship with God is still personal. Somebody need to write down it's personal. In the book of Joshua, chapter 24, and verse number 15, it was Joshua uh, that challenged the children of Israel for them to choose what God will they serve. And he ends with the, the uh, phrase, the very famous phrase, as for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. I don't know about you, but I made my mind up that I'm going to serve God. And I'm going to do everything I can. I, 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 even though you may have to preach in an empty church or preach with just a fraction of the crowd you would normally have. I want you to understand that there's still power in the word of God. Uh, that there's still deliverance deliverance in worship and praise and right now where you are you ought to give God a praise and to lift him up I ought to see some emojis right now and so brothers and sisters this pericope that we have used today is centered around Zacchaeus and Jesus Christ himself the Bible says in this 19th chapter of Luke in verse number one that Jesus had entered and passed through Jericho uh, Zacchaeus who was a tax collector one uh, that the crowd that he would take advantage of by collecting taxes uh, they did not like him too much uh, he was a man of short stature and the Bible says that Zacchaeus he heard that Jesus was going to pass by I want you to understand that it's very important that you have your spiritual antennas raised up high. Uh, that you got to understand that in the midst of COVID and pandemic and uh, in the midst of our government being under siege and the uncertainties of what the future looks like. If I was you, I would understand that even in these dark days, Jesus is still passing by. And so because of that, Zacchaeus, he understood understood he was short and so the bible says he ran ahead of the crowd he found a sycamore tree and he wanted to see jesus so badly that he climbed up this tree a rich man a man of recognition a man of prestige and power but he humbled himself and he climbed up the tree so he can see who jesus is I think we ought to do whatever we can that in this time that we can identify and be revealed to, unto us who Jesus is. Can I submit to you that Jesus cannot be recognized? He can only be revealed.
world. God cannot be recognized. And this is what COVID has proven to us. That the things that we recognize about church is no good to us right now. We have to have a revelation of God that wherever we are, whether it's in the supermarket, the marketplace, in the political arena, even anywhere outside of the church building, Jesus still reigns. And so, brothers and sisters, uh, the Bible says that Jesus was walking by. And seemingly like he would walk by, he came straight to the sycamore tree. And when he came to the sycamore tree, the Bible says he looked up and called Zacchaeus by his name and says Zacchaeus I want you to make pace and come down because today I'm coming to your house. Oh Lord have mercy. Could you imagine how Zacchaeus felt when he was at the top of the tree making a fool out of himself but he did something that somebody else wasn't willing to do. I want to submit to you that sometimes you got to leave the crowd and do what God called you to do. He even though it looks foolish, in order for God to come into your life, in order for God to come into your business, in order for God to come into your money, your success, your marriage, you got to be willing to position yourself and do something different from everybody else. Uh, Jesus says that to him, he comes down, and the Bible says he joyfully receives Jesus. But uh, the thing that happened was, uh, is that those, he had haters around him, because was those that felt that he wasn't worthy for Jesus to come to his house. So they had a problem with Zacchaeus. And they had a problem with Jesus coming to the house of Zacchaeus. I think that's interesting to know uh, that Jesus is no respecter of persons. Uh, that he would take the time to come into somebody's house that they felt was not worthy. Je obviously Jesus had to know what kind of man is this. Uh, this man has robbed us. This man has put the squeeze on us. Uh, this man has benefited from our pain. He works for the Roman government. He's supposed to be a Jew like us, but they use him to put the squeeze on us. Jesus should have went with one of the rabbi's homes, but he chose a sinner to go to his house. I, I don't know about you, but I'm glad that Jesus still hangs out with sinners. Uh, yeah, I know some of us are taught we, you know, uh, we got to separate ourselves from the ungodly. Touch not the unclean thing. I'm a man that was taught about holiness. Uh, but one thing I found out is, is that Zacchaeus, his name means pure. And can I submit to you, that's what holiness means. Holiness based on what you dress and holiness is not based on uh, what you look like but holiness is based on purity yeah. brothers and sisters it's very important that we recognize that God has a plan for your life so I begin to think right now uh, in the corridors of my mind what was so special about Zacchaeus uh, that Jesus would take the time to come to his house can you imagine Jesus who was God manifested in the flesh? Yep. Jesus could have went to anybody else's house. Yep. But I find it interesting that he took the time to follow a man, a short man up in a sycamore tree. Yep. And told him to come down because uh, salvation is coming to your house. Yep. So I began to think about it. Yep. I began to think that number one, one of the reasons um, why Jesus came to his house, write this down now, is number one, it is the power of potential, uh, uh, the potency, the, uh, the, the ability uh, to elevate yourself to another level, that you may not be there yet, but uh, when I get through with you, something awesome is going to come out of your life. Uh, God calls those things that be not as though they were. Uh, and brothers and sisters, uh, it was the potential of Zacchaeus. Uh, what do you mean, Bishop Hurst? His name means purity. Everybody knew who and what he was. But Jesus looked beyond his past and saw something great in his future. Who I'm preaching to right now? Some of you have been exed out by family members. Folks in the church and on your job and in your community because they remember what you used to be and what you used to do. Or can't you celebrate the fact of that what I used to be? 
but that God has another plan for my life that I've got to do better and I've got to go higher I want you to understand that today is your day God's about to do something awesome in your life because of potential God sees something that nobody else can see about you Uh somebody told me a long time ago they said bishop listen God doesn't hear sinners and I looked back at the person and said well if God don't hear sinners then how did you and I get here because what I found out is is that anybody that calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved God has a plan for your life could it be that the reason why Jesus wants to hang out with you and I because he knows that trouble doesn't last always and that something wonderful is about to happen in your life I know the old school would tell us that the places you used to go you don't go no more and the things that you used to do you don't do no more but see some of the problems with the old school church is you try to take the credit for the potential and the change but the bible says if any man be in Christ he is a new creature all things are passed away and all things are become new somebody needs to write down the power of potential I'm glad that when he looks beyond our thoughts and he sees our need he knows that something wonderful has got to happen when Jesus is in your life number two the reason I think that Jesus came to Zacchaeus house was not just because the power of potential but number two is the power of perspective what I mean by the power of perspective he was the only one that knew that I have to change and elevate my position in order to have a different perspective than anybody else in other words I got to do something that nobody else can do Uh he didn't allow his shortcomings no point intended but he was shorter than everybody else but he knew that I'm not going to let my stature and my limitation stop me from seeing who Jesus is and somebody right now would say that I would serve the Lord but because of my condition I can't praise him like I want to so therefore you won't praise God because you will say Bishop I would praise the Lord I would dance before God but I got a bad leg and because I got a bad leg I can't dance in his presence but can I submit something to you that if you got a bad leg or a bad foot then praise God on the good leg and hop on one good leg and lift him up even James Brown said you want to do it on the good foot you're not hearing what I'm saying you can't limit yourself by what people say you can have but let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus clap your hands and shout yes open your mouth at home and tell God thank you shout yeah you got to understand that your potential is good but you got to change your perspective and because a sycamore tree was there he used what he had to see what he can see and I right now you got to see yourself going to the next level you got to see yourself your money's going to rise COVID-19 will not destroy you who I'm preaching to some of you ought to hit the share button right now since you can't tell your neighbor you can share with your neighbor because power belongs to God somebody ought to shout yeah and the only thing was when Jesus decided to come he came 
came into the house uh, but before he can relax uh, all of the haters uh, saw Zacchaeus uh, they said how could Jesus uh, go to a house uh, of a man that is a sinner uh, how can Jesus uh, go to a house uh, of a man that don't live right uh, how could Jesus uh, serve and sit uh, with a man for dinner uh, that don't want to do well and he did this and he did that and the Bible says that Zacchaeus understood why people was mad at him so he didn't get mad at the haters that's a word for somebody you spent too much time trying to prove to your haters that you are worthy of God and that you're worthy of a blessing now that's why it's called a blessing God gave me something that I do not deserve. Somebody ought to shout yes. So this is what he does. He said, listen, Jesus, since you're here, I want to be right with you. And I'm not worthy to have you come into my home. So I tell you what, if I did anybody wrong, I'm going to pay them back four times more. If I robbed anybody, if I did dirt on anybody, and that's why Jesus came for number three, it's the power of purpose. God's about to heal you and let you know that there's power in the name of Jesus. But God said that payday is coming after a while, and He will show you that power belongs to God I got a question for you now what can wash away my sin nothing but the blood of Jesus I want to help somebody to let you know that power belongs to God that you got to go higher I'm coming to your house this was a setup for your next blessing Sing. Jesus is coming to deliver you. Power is coming to deliver you. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Who I'm preaching to, the devil is a liar. I got a word for somebody that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. And you're going high. Higher, higher, and he will show you that you can make it when Jesus is in the house. He said, Salvation has come to this house. Who I'm preaching to, when you got Jesus on board, he'll turn your situation around. When you got Jesus on board, he'll heal the sin sick soul. Wave your hand. Shout yes Lord. Shout yes Lord. Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Oh taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. I'm all right. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and delivered him out of all this trouble who I'm preaching to I'm coming with tears in your eyes I'm coming when they lied on you I'm coming to bring you out shout yeah I know who I am I got to lift him up shout yeah I dare you to give God a crazy praise cause he's bringing you out he's lifting you up he's turning around shout yeah shout yeah yeah I dare you to praise him I dare you to lift him. I'm coming to your house. I'm delivering you. I'm setting you free. 
Lift him up right now. He dwells in the midst of your praise. I dare you to lift him. I dare you to praise him. I dare you to worship him. Say yeah. Say yes. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. He's worthy of your praise. He's worthy of the honor. This is your time. This is your moment. Don't let the devil steal it from you. I'm coming to your house. Not nobody else. I'm coming to your house. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Wow. My friends, people of God, we want to thank God for all of our partners and the members of the Greater Emmanuel Temple Church family. Listen, our time is up. That's the word we have. We pray that you were blessed by the word of God. He's coming to your house. Don't you know he knew Zacchaeus by name? He came there for the purpose to do something great in his life. And I believe right now, God is gonna do something great in your life. I want you to keep on believing. Even if you have to change your perspective, God's not gonna hold your past against you. As a matter of fact, he's gonna use that to give him a greater glory. Because when people see the change in your life, because God has entered into what house? Not your physical house, not the house of God, this house right here. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. God can make that difference. So I wanna pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for everyone that has listened to this word, has been blessed by this ministry. I pray God that you would enter into the inside of them and transform their lives to make them a house of glory, a house of favor, and a house of great anointing. We thank you for this right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Listen, my name once again is Bishop Jermaine D. Hurst. I want to thank you for joining us. Tune in next week. We have another powerful word for you. And so, give it to this ministry. It's great ground and it helps us to do the work of God. Anything you can sow will be a blessing. The information is on the screen. And may the Lord bless you all real good. God bless you. Wow, what an awesome and timely word coming from our wonderful pastor, Bishop Jermaine D. Hurst. Now it's time for you to give. So into this good and fertile ground, you can give by way of cash app by utilizing the dollar sign, get champs, or you can look this up on Givelify at Greater Emmanuel Temple Incorporated. Thank you for tuning in to our today's broadcast. We hope to see you soon. Thank you.